Next is ordinances for second reading, number 2018-16, amending ordinance chapter five, article three, section 5-25 of the Code of the Township of Oldbridge. Do I have a motion or a discussion? I'm sorry, open to the public? Anyone wish to speak from the public? Seeing no hands, close the public portion and council comments. Anyone? Mrs. Walker? Yes, I'd like to ask a question of the attorney about this. Is this going to bring government to like a, a halt or slow it down? Because um, will things be able to be moved up to first reading that night and considered first reading? Yes. It, it will be permissible, but you'd have to, the way it's written is it has to first be approved. The, the question of whether it slows government or not is not one of a legal uh, issue, but I mean, in, when you read it in the way it is now uh, in the ordinance book, um, it certainly could lead to um, a slowing down of the ability for the mayor or council, quite frankly, to get things done in a timely fashion <clears throat> because of the way um, the approvals it will take. Yeah, I, I have some concerns about that because we never had any problems in the past when we had first reading, second reading because depending, the council president would allow us to speak if we needed to, and there's plenty of time. I feel that this is going to slow a lot of things down, and we're not gonna get things done in a timely manner. Chairman? Anyone else? Mr. Murphy? <clears throat> okay, this is my ordinance. Um, there's a couple reasons I brought it up. Once, I'm trying to take politics, as once again, Debbie Walker is trying to put politics into it. As far as what happened, I called I read the ordinance, it made no sense because it said the mayor may bring up an ordinance, may ask for an ordinance, it didn't say to, to who. I spoke to the other attorney and he said, you're absolutely right, this was done before me, I never would have let it get away with like this. I called down to the um, state, uh, legal municipalities, I spoke to three lawyers they told me what was in there was wrong, it's illegal, and it cannot be there. The mayor has no right at all to bring up an ordinance. It has to come through a council person. He said, look, you don't have to even accept it. I said, well, we're gonna take anything he goes through the chairperson with. But furthermore, a lot of things haven't been getting discussed. In fact, what started the whole thing actually was be, during the primary, Mrs. Walker comes into one of our meetings and says, look, we can beat the, we can beat the, um, the other Republicans with this, what they call the bad Republicans, which I'm not so sure not they're right anymore. I'm not gonna sit here and take you telling lies about me. I'm tired You're of it. You're a liar. I Let's had an attorney talk. send you a letter. I'm okay, not taking it anymore. Okay, listen to me. Just, you be quiet. I have the floor. I'm, yes. Don, no, you're no, making no. up John. a story. All right, John. Okay, listen. Anyway, somebody told me we, nothing happened with that, and I didn't understand why. Somebody told me, Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Oh, don't lie here. Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Sohar voted on the change. At, at the, what's it? The change in the um, the zoning, which uh, which allowed the apartments. I asked them. I swear to God, they both said we didn't understand what we were voting for. I will take a lie detector test on that. John. And you got to get rid of the politics. Right. The five of us are running for the people. For once, we're running for the people. And I'm tired of hearing, I agree with Anita. I agree with Anita. You know, don't say it. The people already know it's a farce. That's all I have to say. That ordinance, I make a motion, we pass it now. All right, so you're, you're talking about the ordinance and whatever else you spun out. So are you now concluding your comments? For this time. Okay, so your comments are now concluded. Okay, can I move on? Anyone else wish to speak? Dr. Greenberg? Okay, yes. Dr. Greenberg. There is a process involved, and a lot of people at home may not understand it. And so basically, a lot of times, there's discussion items that go up. If there isn't already an ordinance for it, something new, um, something that's involved. So you have a discussion. When there is something first reading, 
It's a basically, when you're a council person, you read it, you decide whether it's something you want to move forward. In fact, everyone can move everything till second reading, and at that time, you either have two weeks or a month. Most of the time, it's two weeks, but during the summer, it's a month to do your research. So if you do your due diligence, and you read it, and you try to understand it, and you reach out to the people, a heads of department, excuse me, heads of departments that understand this and that can help you to understand this. And you can have discussions um, as far as you're not breaking the Sunshine Law with other council members, and that means you can't have the majority of the council. You can talk about it. You could ask the public. You could ask your neighbors. You could ask your friends. You could ask them what you think about this. This, I do not think, when I took this position, was to help the residents. I do not think it benefits the residents. No resident has ever come forward and said to me, I want to change this. I've sat in this courtroom for many, many, many years, many times. Democrats and Republicans, it doesn't matter. That's not the issue here. It's the issue when you take a job, you should understand the job. If not, don't try to take the job and don't do it. Don't try to rewrite it. You're to try to understand it before you apply for the job. And obviously, there are always things to improve it. But this does not improve it at all. And it doesn't have a value. So I will be voting no. But more so, I cannot tolerate when people say things through hearsay, and this one said this, and this one said that. That's not what it's about. Here you're presenting this. Everyone presents their side of it, and you feel if it has a value, you vote for it. But to character assassinate people all the time, that is non-productive. And so I think when this comes up, and I believe in transparency for the residencies, residents, this does not do this at all. This allows council people to grandstand and pontificate and bloviate and go on and on about things and really slow down government. It's slow enough as it is with the process, and I choose to be productive and get things done. I do not see the value in this, and so I find it very disturbing that people took this position and don't understand the position. They don't understand the role that they're supposed to do, and for many years, it was simple. First reading, second reading. Second reading, you also get the public. You hear their input. They come up, and then you make an educated decision. It's not that complicated if you do your work. And believe me, everyone in this town, the employees, the head of the department, they're here to help you and to help you understand it. And to do our outreach to the public, I think it will serve you well. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the council? Uh, Mr. Murphy, I'm going to give you one more bite at the apple, but that's it, because we okay. have to move on. I okay. put something in there so it doesn't slow down government. The thing I put in there was we can move the first reading to second reading. When I spoke to the state, they said, wait, you don't discuss this first? I said, no, they said you got to go through first reading first. And the attorney said, well, you have to discuss it before you go to first reading. I said, not according to that. He said, well, I hope you do. And furthermore, it is a political thing. Two people threatened me if I didn't vote with Anita and the girls and threatened my family. I will play it right on tape if you want me to do it now. I am not a politician. I don't care. You want me to play it? I'll play it now. I'm tired of threatening. I've been threatened at least twice. One is still on tape, and it will come out. Thank you. All right. Has anyone else anything to say? I move. Anybody else for comments? We're good? One more bite at the apple? No. I would, does anybody else have something to say? Yes. No, I just want to agree with Dr. Greenberg. We have plenty of time. When this comes up, if you want to do your homework, you can call the administration, the staff. Everybody's there to help us. There's no reason to slow things down. We're very transparent. Mary gives more than enough opportunity if you want to talk about something during first reading. She allows it. This is just, I really believe that this is just people want to showboat. That's all this is about. All right. We're, I would like to say one, one last thing. <coughs> I sit on another board um, with um, Mr. Murphy, um, the MUA, which he worked for and he's retired from. We basically get our agenda on Monday and our meetings on Wednesday. I don't understand. He has no problem with that. 
I don't, you know, not ask any questions and everything gets done. And still it's plenty of time to get your information if you do your work and you are committed and dedicated. So this is just grandstanding at its best. Thank you. Okay. I will close the comments by saying that I do not support this as well. I think that we have a good communication process with the in, in all the department heads. I think that administration tries really to help us out and give us direction. I think I try to let people speak if they feel the need, and I just don't think it's necessary to make this kind of a power play. So I am not voting for this. Thank you. I move it. Okay, moved by Mr. Merwin. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Murphy. And roll call, please, Stella. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? No. Dr. Greenberg? No. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Fischetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? No. President Soha? No. Five yes, four no. Okay. Ordinance number five, number 2018-21. An ordinance of the Township of Oldbridge, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, mandating direct deposit of new pay for all municipal employees and elected officials, pursuant to NJSA 5214-15F ET SEK. Anyone from the public wish to be heard on this? Come forward, please. Good evening. Uh, last meeting, you discussed this at length. There was a couple things that were left out. <clears throat> uh, you have nine unions in town. Probably each one has a clause in their contract that says, there shall be no unilateral change in term and condition of employment. Method of compensation is a term and condition of employment. If you do this, you're probably going to get grievances, ULPs, and a bunch of other things. So that wasn't addressed to you, but you should give that some thought. The second thing, which I think is more important, is about 25 years ago, I worked here, and the bank did an analysis on the payroll account to conclude whether or not it would be feasible for them to keep the account, and if they would in fact pay all charges that you incur for your checks, for payroll. And the conclusion was they wanted to keep the account, so they paid ADP. That was the name of the outfit that did our checks. Three years ago, I'm, I retired 11 years ago, three years ago, I got the budget and I went through it at length, obviously, because I ran for office. and. Uh, you switched from ADP to prime point, I believe it's called. And there was no bills there for prime point. So I went through the last six months of the bill listings that you all approve. And you know what I didn't find? I didn't find a bill for prime point. I went through your bu budget for this year. And you know what I didn't find? A line item for prime point. And that's because you don't pay a bill to prime point. The bank pays the payroll bill. You don't pay it. And last month, when you had your meeting, you were told how you're saving taxpayers money. Well, you're not saving taxpayers money because you're not paying anything. Why you were told that, I got no clue. But I can tell you right now for a fact, I triple checked, I do have a little experience in investigating things, you're not paying this bill. So whatever you were told was inaccurate. That's sugarcoating it. I don't sugarcoat anything you were lied to. Have a nice day. Okay. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Seeing no hands, I will close the public portion, and now I will go to council. Anyone on my left have something to say? Mr. Murphy. Yes. Um, after hearing all that, uh, I wasn't happy when he told me, he goes, I guess, Mr. Murphy, you don't want to save the township money. Um, right now, I don't know what else didn't he tell us. Um, I would like to investigate this a little more, and I would like to uh, table the matter. 
Second. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to table by Mr. Murphy. It was seconded by Mr. Merwin. Okay, next will be C3, Mr. Murphy. Um, yes, I have a question on that. Um, what's, it, what's the, what are we talking about there? Is that, is that the catch and release program? Okay, as far as this concerns, it's the uh, Stray All Cats Incorporated, uh, through John Heilbrunn and with the TNR committee, this is an organization that will maintain the cat population according to the TNR. So there's no cost to the town. It's a, basically, it's a layer between us and, and the caretakers for the cats. There's no cost to the town for this. Okay, originally they told us there'd be no cost to the, to the town or to the, I, I was under the impression to the public. Do we have to pay for the neutering and stuff, the public? Can I, can I explain the, the TNR ordinance? It's a volunteer. It just gives you permission if you want to sign up and if you know there's a colony, for example, behind any strip mall, anywhere in town by apartments. If you choose to do the TNR program, which essentially means trap, neuter, vaccinate, and release, the individual, the volunteers to do that, they are responsible for the cost. The township is not responsible for the cost. And Save All Strays is the layer that will oversee these groups that sign up to maintain the colonies. For example, there's a group that does it down at um, the beachfront. So if anyone wants to volunteer, they can fundraise on their own. They can, you know, there's a lot of places you can have um, very, um, like a low cost spay and neuter place. Uh, if you get in touch with um, New Jersey Animal Alliance, they contribute $30 to it. If you bring it to the SPCA, it's low cost. And a lot of people start out feeding their cats in their backyard, which is a nice thing to do, just like if you feed the birds or something. But really, if you think of a cat, when they're six months, um, they can reproduce. So then you have six kittens. In six mo months, those kittens will be reproducing. So that instead of spending your money on a lot of feed, if you just trap that cat, it's initial one-time cost, but you will save many, many lives. So it is, the town does not give money to it. The town um, now is incorporating Save All Strays that will oversee, and you can have an application at the, um, the shelter where you go and fill out the application if you want to do it. So it's uh, basically on an individual. It's allowing you to do this. Okay, I was I was actually going to do it. We have eight of them in our back. Um, but I didn't really, we were going to have to pay for that. We're still going to have to pay for the feed, feed even after we neuter them, you know. Right, that's the, you know, you try to slow down the. But, but I, I, well, I understand, there's a place down in, um, I forget the name of it, Friends of Animals, that'll do it for 45, that's where I'm gonna end up going. Mm -hmm. But that's the best price I found, that's for a female cat, a stray. So if you wanna tell anybody that, it's Friends of Animals in down south. Okay, Jersey, right. thank you. Okay. okay, I understand. Mrs. Walker? Yes, in addition to the savings, we also have improved a lot of our equipment that was in really very, very poor shape. It wasn't functioning well. So in addition to, we would have had to replace the equipment anyway, so we have now updated equipment plus savings. And I hate when people have to make things political all the time. It's disgusting. Anyone else for comments? Mr. Murphy? Um, yes, I understand what he was saying. The concept sounds good, but what we promised a report or something, and why haven't we gotten it? I, I understand I, what Mr. Kale said is right. I, I think it's a great thing, but is it going to be one of those things that becomes a political football? That's all I want to know. Yeah. Councilman yeah. Murphy, okay. yes, as part of our scope, we are... Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry? Yeah, thank you. As part of our scope, we are uh, responsible for one year of what's called measurement and verification. We have been providing emergency medical services for almost 50 years, and we would greatly appreciate the opportunity to continue, of continuing to provide these services. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to be heard this evening? 
Seeing no hands, I will close the public portion and we will now go to council comments. Mr. Murphy. Okay, um, well first of all, as, as you're here, um, I, w I was supposed to bring this up last week. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, my next door neighbor had passed away on Mother's Day. She was 52 years old and had a massive heart attack. Uh, the husband couldn't make it here tonight. He was going to speak, so he asked me to think. I'm not sure who it was. It was one of the EMSs from Oldbridge, and he just, I just want to say thank you for that. I appreciate it. Her name was Paige. A lot of people here you knew her, and she was a longtime um, worker at the Raritan Bay in Oldbridge. Um, that's it for that. Uh, I have one more thing. Mr. Piscitti, I when you spoke before about the, the two meetings a, 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 a month, um, I kind of agree with you because we only have one meeting a month in the summer. And between the next two, there's six weeks between the meetings, and the next two after that, it's almost two months. So if we can go almost two months, why don't we just, like you said, have a, public, have a, a meeting in the first week and then a... Th uh, a third week, we'll have a, a regular meeting. There's no reason to do that. And like we had spoken before, um, we're, we're working for the people. At least six members of the council, at least five, possibly six members are for the people. And we're, there's a lot more to come. And we're going to make a lot of changes. Just because you say it's that's the way it was, it wasn't always that way. And it's going to be changed. A lot of things will be changed. Um, and I don't know if you understood my, discu uh, my discussion thing, but you didn't have to bring everything up for first reading. Uh, it says you may. But by doing this, it it's, doesn't only slow down government. It speeds it up. This stuff's all done now. And you're going to see, these, see the meetings get shorter and shorter. Uh, because we're going to try to do the right thing, and we're going to do what we can for the public. Thank you. Mr. Piscetti? Yeah. Um, on the direct, going back to the direct pay, I know we tabled it, but uh, I, w I wanted to, can I talk to Dawn about it? I want to ask a question. You can't talk about it if it's tabled. Uh, just can't <laughs> talk about it. Can't talk about it. Okay. Okay, anything else for Mr. Piscitti? No. Okay, anyone down here? Mrs. Walker? A talk keeps coming up about having an agenda meeting and a business meeting that was tried years ago, but there were four meetings a month, two agenda and two business, because we have to pay our bills. If we do one agenda and one business, the township bills will not get paid in timely fashion. So we'd have to consider four meetings a month. And I, I am here for the people, and I'm getting pretty tired of, of being attacked by Mr. Murphy. Anyone else? You already spoke. Anyone else over here? You guys already spoke. Is there anybody who has not spoken? No, no John, I'm trying to be polite. I wanted to allow there are other members who haven't spoken yet and then we'll go and then we'll do one more round and that's it okay all right yes mr. Murphy okay I agree with Tony like I said there's gonna be almost two months in this summer where we don't have a meeting I figure every single month we should have one agenda and one regular two weeks apart if mr. Amasu can't get the bills paid in a month then obviously he isn't doing his job. Mr. Murphy, so, please. No, I'm just saying, I, no, I, I can speak about that. He's not here, I'll talk to him about that on the phone. But listen, there should be no reason that we can't have two meetings every single month right through the summer. And that will be brought up next week, thank you. Or uh, next two weeks or a year or something. What? In a year? No. Okay. Anyone else have any comments from the council? All right. We're good? Okay. All right. All right. Next is, yeah, next is a motion to adjourn. It's not a first reading, second reading. It's a motion to adjourn.